Hello and welcome back to the Master Civil Engineering. In the previous video, we learned that how to find the slope and displacement of a beam using the movement area method. And in this video, we will learn that how to find the slope and displacement of the beam using the conjugate beam method. Okay, I have been given a question uh, which states that we have to determine the slope and displacement at uh, point C, assuming EI is constant and we have to use the conjugate beam method you can see this is an overhanging beam of span 15 meters uh, there are two supports a support a is a pain support and support b is a roller support and a 15 kilonewton of concentrated load is applied at point c first what is a conjugate beam method so conjugate beam uh, method has two theorems theorem first states that the slope at any point in the real beam is numerically equal to the shear at the corresponding point in the conjugate beam and theorem 2 states that the displacement of a point in a real beam is numerically equal to the movement at the corresponding point in the conjugate beam okay so uh, slope is numerically equal to the shear in the conjugate beam and displacement of a real beam is numerically equal to the movement at the corresponding point in the conjugate beam first we will uh, find the vertical reactions of this beam assuming that ra and rb be the vertical reactions at point a and b respectively in the upward direction and then we will take the movement about support b equal to 0 assuming that clockwise movements are positive and anti clockwise movements are negative so ra since it is in the upward direction its movement about point b will be clockwise and its value will be equal to ra into 10 and uh, movement of 15 kilonewton about point B will also be clockwise and its magnitude will be 15 into 5. So RA will be equal to a minus 7.5 kilonewton. Okay, since the value of RA came out to be negative, it means it is in the downwards direction. Okay, and for vertical equilibrium of forces, since RA is now in the downward direction ra plus 15 kilonewton it should be equal to value of rp which is in the upwards direction so rb its value is equal 22.5 kilonewton and it is in the upwards direction after finding the vertical reactions we can draw the bending movement diagram for this beam so movement at a is zero since it's a pin support movement at b it will be minus 7.5 into 10 so its value is equal to 75 minus 75 kilonewton meter and mc its value is minus 7.5 into 15 plus 22.5 into 5 which is equal to 0 you can see the m by ei diagram uh, for this beam uh, m by ei diagram is simply if you divide movement diagram by ei that is the flexural rigidity of the beam uh, you get the m by ei diagram since ei is here constant so uh, you have to divide each value by EI to get the M by EI diagram. After this, you will draw the conjugate beam uh, for this real beam. So, this is the real beam. Okay, at point A, we have a pin support. At point uh, B, we have an internal pin or roller, and C is a free support. So, its conjugate beam will be like this. Uh, uh, point a support a it will be uh, pin again uh, support b since it's an internal pin its conjugate support is uh, internal hinge so at point b you have to replace internal pin by internal hinge and uh, at support c its conjugate since it's a free support its conjugate support is fixed okay so this abc is the conjugate beam and you have to load this conjugate beam with the m by ei diagram okay after loading it uh, with the m by ei diagram you have to find the support reactions and then you have to find the shear and displacement at the corresponding point to get the value of slope and displacement here we have to find the shear and movement at point c to get the value of slope and displacement at point c in the real beam okay so this is our conjugate beam and it is loaded with m by ei diagram first we will find the reactions for this beam for this we will divide this beam into two parts okay uh, part a to b and part b to c you can see the uh, reactions for this beam okay i have assumed these reactions so here a y dash is in the upward direction for this part b y dash is in the upward direction and for this it will be opposite so it will be for this part bc uh, by dash will be opposite of uh, part ab so it will be in the downward direction and these are the assumed direction of shear and movement at c 
you can see the loading okay since loading will be divided into two triangles okay so total load for this will be 1 by 2 into 75 divided by ei into 10 meter since length of this part is 10 meter okay it's centroid from a is 20 divided by 3 that is 2 h by 3 and centroid from b is h by 3 or 10 by 3 meter and uh, movement or uh, sorry and total load for this part bc it will be 1 by 2 75 divided by ei into 5 okay okay and its centroid uh, from uh, point c will be equal to uh, 5 by uh, so centroid from point c it will be 2 into 5 by 3 and from b it will be 5 by 3 so to find the reaction we need this reaction b y dash okay and it can be obtained from this part a b okay so we will consider first this left part and calculate from this the value of vertical reaction b y dash we don't need to calculate a y dash okay after finding the b y dash we can easily find from this part b c the value of shear and the movement okay so we only need to calculate the value of b y dash so you will take movements about support a equals zero for this part a b assuming clockwise are clockwise movements are positive and anti-clockwise movements are negative movement of b y dash about a is b y dash into 10 minus b y dash since it's a anti-clockwise movement and movement of uh, this uh, total load about a is area of this load multiplied by the centroidal distance so it will be 1 by 2 into 75 divided by ei into 10 into 20 by 3 okay it's centroid from a is 20 divided by 3 meters from this you will get the value of by dash which is equal to 50 divided by ei okay its units are kilonewton meter square after finding the value of by dash now you will consider this part that is part bc okay and for this part for the vertical equilibrium of forces to get the value of shear at c by dash plus vc dash plus this total load this should be equal to zero so uh, this vc dash assuming that uh, uh, forces in the upward direction are positive and downward direction are negative since all these forces that is by dash vertical reaction at b shear at c and this total load all the three are in the downward direction so all are negative so minus vc dash which is the shear at c minus 250 divided by ei which is the value of this vertical reaction at b minus 1 by 2 75 divided by ei into 5 which is the value of total load it should be equal to zero from this you will get the value of v c that is shear at c in the conjugate beam equal to minus 437.5 divided by ei since slope in the real beam is equal to the uh, shear at the corresponding point in the conjugate beam it means the value of slope at point c in the real beam is equal to minus 437.5 divided by ei minus means this uh, slope is in the clockwise direction we assume clockwise shear to be negative and anti-clockwise slope to be positive clockwise a slope to be negative and anti-clockwise uh, slope to be positive so it means this slope is clockwise okay and its value is 437.5 divided by ei after finding the shear now we, we will find the movement at point c which will be equal to the displacement uh, at uh, point c in the real beam so for this you will take uh, summation of movement about c equal zero for this part bc again assuming clockwise movements are positive and anti-clockwise are negative so this movement at c in the conjugate beam it is in the uh, anti-clockwise direction its value is negative movement of this total load about p it's again anti-clockwise uh, movement okay so it is minus uh, one by uh, two uh, into 75 divided by ei into five into 2 into 5 by 3 we are taking movements about point c that's why it's in anti-clockwise direction and movement of this support reaction b y dash about uh, point c it's also anti-clockwise movement and its magnitude is b y dash into 5 value of b y dash is 250 divided by ei into 5 and it should be equal to 0 from this you will get the value of 
movement at C in the conjugate beam equal to minus 1875 divided by EI and its value is kilonewton uh, meter cube. Okay. Uh, okay. So again, this value is negative. Uh, uh, this value is negative. It means since movement in the conjugate beam at the corresponding point is equal to the displacement in the real beam at the same point. So delta C dash, it will be equal to minus 1875 divided by EI. Okay. Negative means uh, this displacement is in the downward direction. We assume uh, that upward uh, displacement is positive and downward displacement is negative. Okay. So the value of slope at point C is minus 437.5 divided by EI. Its value will be kilonewton meter square. And value of displacement at point C in the real beam is equal to minus 1875 divided by EI. And its value is kilonewton meter cube. Slope is clockwise and displacement is in the downward direction. Okay. So this is how you can find the slope and displacement uh, for a beam using the conjugate beam method. Okay. You just have to remember that... Um, a slope in the real beam will be equal to the shear at the corresponding point in the conjugate beam and displacement in the real beam will be equal to the movement at the corresponding point in the conjugate beam but you have to draw conjugate beam for the real beam and then load it with the m by ei diagram okay and you have to take the supports conjugate supports okay uh, you can watch the exact solution of the same question solved using the moment area method. Okay, and you can compare these two methods and find out which one is more uh, easy to use. Okay, I hope you definitely learn something new from this video. This was a beginner problem. I will try to solve some more questions on these displacement using all the four methods. Okay, uh, I hope this solution video. Uh, was helpful and you definitely learned something new if you found this video uh, helpful you can subscribe to my channel and share this video thanks for watching master civil engineering and stay tuned